As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten men. How many? Okay, making sure you're listening. With leprosy stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, go show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Okay, we talked about this recently. This is a familiar scripture. What did we talk about? Go where? Go home? Where are we going? That didn't answer my question. Where are we going? Go, 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 go. Some of you sound like you're gagging. Where, where do we go? Where do we go? Where Jesus sends us, wherever he's, whatever he says. We talked about application, right? It'd be foolish for them just to talk about going and not to do what he said, but they begin to respond to his words. And in the response to his words, a miracle happens. Are you with me? What's the miracle that happens? They get healed. Healed of a cold? A headache? I, got a, I had a headache today. I don't know why. It's gone now. They got healed of leprosy. As they applied the word and they went, on the way, they get healed. Two weeks ago, Pastor Slavic off of that message, begin to share about follow. Who, you, who do you follow? Following Jesus. Do you remember this message? One point that I wrote down in my notes, stuck with me, is we have to make a decision on who we follow and never turn back on that decision. Yeah? And I want to continue right off of that message of what Pastor Slack was talking about and talk about today a message I don't know how to title, but I titled it in a way I think it's going to help you remember. Thank you. And Daniel, Daniel was almost preaching my message before, before ending worship. Thank you. Write in your book, thank you, or on your phone, thank you. Or on your what? Forehead, thank you, yeah, sure. Or on your neighbor's forehead so you don't forget, thank you. Hey, bro, don't turn. I, want, I need to see this. All, all service. Thank you. Okay, why are we going to talk about thank you? Look what happens. One of them, one of them, you know, before, actually, before, before I, I say one of them, if I, if I preach the same message as I did three weeks ago, would it, would it make you kind of irritated? You guys are lying. You guys are lying. I already heard this before. You know how many times, you know how many times, as soon as a preacher starts with a specific scripture or a title to the message, I'm going to talk to this side, (laughs) that because of the story or because of what we're listening to, almost immediately, almost immediately, if we've heard it before, I think some of you probably didn't listen to half of what Allah said because you already know that story. Some of you are like, what did she talk about? And because we've heard it, we shut off to receiving anything because we've heard it before. And I was sharing with the interns this week in class they started asking me some deep questions, man. I, they started asking me questions I think only God knows. I'm like, who do you think I am? You know, pa- ask Pastor Leo these things, man. I don't know about what, you, what the heck you're, I don't know what that means even, what you're talking about. But you know what I begin to tell them, God, God, God began to put on my heart, is that I think it's foolish for us, I don't, my opinion, I think it's foolish for us to go, to go deep and want to go deep and want those deep things and deep truths and Paul, like Paul says, I, uh, a time has come now that God has revealed the, his mysteries to us. In, in other words, things that were hidden, things that people did not know, didn't understand, he is now beginning to re- reveal through his son. And I think it's foolish to go deep and ask these deep questions when in the foundational things we are not learning how to live by. 
And so what if I didn't continue to talking about thank you, but we just talked about go again? I think it's okay. I think what you want, a good thing but not the right thing, is we want something new. We want something that we haven't heard before. We want, you know, there will be no fruit in the deep things that you want to know if there isn't fruit right now in the simple things that you already know. If God is not working in my life, in the, in, the basic, in the basics of Christianity, in the basics of my faith, today in my life, there is no need for me to move forward into the deep things of God because they will also not bring any fruit. But if the simple things, if the foundational things, if the things I choose to live by today that I already know God is working in me through, I see fruit in my life through these things, then as God begins to reveal more things to you, those things will bring fruit as well. My, you hear my daughter? Oh, she said, oi, oi, papa, uh, yeah, preach it. She'll bay none of you back me up, she'll back me up. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus. I almost named it, came back, the comeback. Came back to Jesus, shouting. He was What? I just, some of you don't think it's okay to shout in church, but shouts in the Bible right here, shouting. Praise God. Some of you get uncomfortable when your neighbor says, praise God. Praise God. When two hours ago you were just shouting down the Seahawks and they lost, but when you came to church and your neighbor said, praise God, it got you uncomfortable. Why did it get you uncomfortable? If in the Bible people praise God, I think today in the church we can praise God. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> he fell to the ground. Why, is, why are people falling in church? That's weird. He fell to the ground. Okay, ask God why. At Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. I think, I think they say in Greek, that specific word is, this is one of the only places in the scripture. Or maybe, you know, if you find something else, you correct me. But what I heard is that this specific word in this specific passage, one of the only words in Greek that's used that's calling this man an alien, calling this man, he's not, he's not one of us, in other words. He's, he's an outsider. That's what this man was, and he came back. Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give Glory to God, except this foreigner. And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go, your faith has healed you. Your, some of your Bibles might say, your faith has saved you and healed you. Do you know why the things we know, we need to ask God for deeper revelation of? Jesus loves you. Start with that. Jesus loves you. You guys believe in this? Are you sure? Is it in the Bible? How many times? A lot. Jesus loves you. Is there anybody here who that is new news for? Anybody? What is the response in your life? What does the response look like in your life to the fact that you claim to know that he loves you? I love you guys. Can I have a tissue? I don't even want I'm just kidding. And I love my wife. <laughs> and my love expressed to my wife 
is very different to the love I express to you. Somebody said, I'm glad. <laughs> Let's keep it that way, bro. I know that she loves me. And the knowledge of her love to me does something in my life that changes the way I live. See, I should have asked this question a little bit different. Do you really know? Do you really, really, really know? Do you really, really know that Jesus loves you? There are people that have such a revelation of this love that there is no other place that they run to to try to find it. So we have ten guys that get touched by the power and the love of Jesus. All ten. All ten. Not a predestined eight or seven. But all ten get healed that obey his word. All ten that respond see a miracle happen in their life. But there was one out of ten that was walking with the ten that something began to happen to. As he was fulfilling the word of God, he felt obliged, he felt compelled, he felt that he needed to turn around and come back to where this all started. See, you know that Jesus loves you. I know, I believe you do. I don't, I'm not saying you're a liar. But I think the level of the revelation you have of Jesus' love needs to go deeper. Amen. Needs to grow deeper. This is why I think the enemy even uses this. Listen to a new sermon. Man, if God touched you through something, through a, through a sermon last year, you never need to go back to it. Just keep moving forward. But I think sometimes when we feel like God is touching us through a specific word, we need to return to that word and get back to where God was touching us and say, God, renew me in this area again. Re remind me again what you spoke to me. Remind me how you touched me. Sometimes we want so many things that the thing we already got is not growing, it's stale. But what God wants to do is the things that we already have, he wants to renew. He wants to deepen us. He wants to strengthen us. You know, I would be okay with growing in the knowledge of the love that Jesus has for me than studying scripture and becoming a theologian. If I just know in my life how much he loves me, that's enough for me. But there's too many people that want to go deep. And the deeper they go, the weirder they get. You can't talk to them. You can't have a conversation with them. They don't involve themselves in church. They don't clean up the garbage. They don't stack up chairs. They don't hang out with people. They don't sit with somebody that needs to be talked to about their week. They don't want to sit and talk about angels, about Jezebel, and about the times to come. But when it comes to loving somebody and knowing how much God loves you, it seems to be very surfacy. You know what a revelation of the love of Jesus will do to your life? It will bring a face to Scripture. Write that in your notes. It will bring a face to a Scripture. John 1 says this. The Word was in the beginning. Y'all know this. What's the next part? The word was with God. And the word was. What's the next part? Now I'm going to help, help you out. Siri, Siri, what's John 1? I heard you. I heard you. 
In the beginning, the word already existed. Or in the beginning, the word was. The word was with God. And the word. Am I reading that right? The word was with God. And the word was. What? He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word, back to the word, gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. Verse 14, skip down to that. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfaith, unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Okay, let's try to wrap our head around this just for a quick sec. The Word was with God. Okay? And the Word was God. This Word was God. Verse 14. So the Word. Grab, if you have your phone or Bible, hold it up, please. The Word. This is crazy. I want you to see this just for a minute. The Word became human <laughs> when's the last time that something in here began to give you a visible image of the man Christ Jesus the word became flesh some, some of you, hurry up and talk about thank you, man. I love that. I love when you thank me. I love when you talk about thanks. We're getting there. The word became flesh. So the word was in the beginning. The word was with God. The word was God. Okay? Don't get dizzy if you get dizzy. I'm glad you're sitting down. I'm standing. I'm not, if I fall over, wake me up. And so, in verse 14, the word became flesh. For those of us that are scared from that word, we read NLT and it says human. <laughs> the word became human. And I want to paint a picture to you. Jesus! We're lepers, can you heal us? Okay. I think this was, you think I'm being outrageous? I think they were shouting in the way. You know how you shout when you really need something? Like when someone's in your way and trap, move! You know, I, I saw some of you driving. I, I got you on Find Me on that app, whatever. I stay away, I stay away from where you are. Jesus, heal us. We're lepers. Go show yourselves to the priests. Okay. <laughs> and it says, as they begin to go to the priests, one man begins to look at himself. And I don't know if it was happening as he was looking or he was focused on going and then he looked or he stopped to look and then he was going or he was going and he was looking and as he was looking, he continued going. And I don't know which one of those it was. But in his going, he looked. <laughs> Come on, this is good. It's not on my notes. This is good. He looked. And as he looked, 
in his going, maybe he stopped and continued going. No, I'm kidding. Let's, let's get serious. He was going and he looked. And either in that moment or in the moment to come or in the moment right before, he saw a change. He saw his miracle finally come in his life. And he's looking at his sick body, which is now perfectly whole. No more sores, no more blood. He feels his face and it feels good for the first time. <laughs> Nothing's hurting. Nothing, you know, like she was saying, you know, she, she, she all of a sudden I was, you know, putting lotion on her cracky skin. I'm like, I'm looking at visuals. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is probably so gross. And she's, no more cracky skin, no more pain. And he's, you know, they're not, not, not running. <laughs> yep, it worked. <laughs> it worked. I'm going to the priest. And, and one man's just. What? What? Oh, man, I'm getting emotional. Before I go. I need to go back and tell him thank you. One, one guy out of ten sees his miracle finally come, breakthrough finally come, healing finally come. And in his journey to go to the priest, you know what they say? They say in the book of Leviticus, I believe, Bible scholars, you can Help me out. Book of Leviticus, it says there was a two-step process that lepers had to follow. And what Jesus was saying, go to the priest. This was biblical. This isn't the law. One of the things that would, would happen is as they went to the priest, they couldn't go back into the city where everybody else lived and say, hey, Jesus healed us. We're good now. We can be with you guys. Jesus wasn't. We know Jesus wasn't approved or he wasn't a high priest. He wasn't, his words were not credited to those that were in, in the temple and in, in the law. And they were actually completely against him. We know that well enough. And so they couldn't come into the city and say, hey, hey, we're good now. Jesus healed us. What they had to do is they had to go to, a pre, to the priest and it would officiate. It would make the healing, you know, it's like. God healed your cancer? Okay, you know, that's great. God bless you. We want to see some papers. Bring us something from the doctor that says you had cancer and now you are free from cancer. We want to solidify this testimony. And so basically this is what they're doing. They're going to the priests and the priests are going to solidify. They're going to give value. They're going to give truth that these guys are actually cleansed. And once they were approved that they were cleansed and it was, this was made official, their healing was made official. It was, it was legit, they'd be accepted back into society. They'd be accepted to now live where every normal person lives, to be with everybody, not to be an outsider anymore. And so the nine are running We got the healing. Now we can be normal. Hear me out. We got the healing. Now we can be accepted. We got the healing. Now my life can start. Now I can do what I want to do. Staggering statistic that 10%, 10% in this story return. But I, you know what's more staggering is how many get their breakthrough and get their healing and get their answer and we don't see them again. I got what I need. I'm good. 
thank you. Where are the other nine? Where, didn't I heal ten? Didn't I heal ten? Where are the other nine? Only this one Samaritan came back to give glory to God. And this one man, all of a sudden, the word that was spoken brought him to a place where he saw his miracle come to pass. He's healed. That's it. And I think many of us, we get stuck here. Or from this moment, we continue in the ways that we want. That was a great word, man. Holla at your boy. Preach down the house. I got a new Instagram quote. But the word has not become flesh. It gave you what you needed. It answered the problem that you had. It gave you the healing that you were asking for. Breakthrough came into your life. But what happened after that moment? Often we get stuck because we got what we needed and we're good where we are. But I think the Holy Spirit is desiring and challenging me in my life that when you get what he promised, when you see the, the coming of his word, the fruition of his word, the fruit of his word, that all of a sudden as you continue in the journey now to pursue him, there's a face on your miracle. Did I lose anybody? The word started there. It got him to this place. He was healed. But as he returned to the place the word came from, all of a sudden he saw Jesus in a way he did not see him when he was crying for a miracle. He saw Jesus in a way before he got his answer. He saw Jesus in a way before he followed the sinner's prayer and said, Lord, I give you my life and you are the Lord of my life. He saw Jesus in this moment in a different way because the word that was spoken, he saw the, for, the fulfilling of in his life and he returned to the one who spoke it that he could come to know him in a new way and all of a sudden the word that was spoken and did a work in his life did not leave him in the same place but brought him back to the place who spoke it and he got to see the man who is the word who was the word who is the living word all of a sudden the word became a lie All of a sudden, he saw Jesus now face to face. You know, I, I get a little bit confused because I'm like, wait, you told him to go to the priest. Maybe some of you are asking this question. I asked it. If you're listening carefully, I told you to go to the priest. I went to the priest. But you know what I begin to think about right after that because I'm like well, I'm like wait how is this guy it's like you want to let's do this man how how is this guy how is this guy better than the other nine they all obeyed the word right they went and one decided to come back you know he's he's extra grateful he's really happy he was, he was like you know the spunky one in the group you know the one that they thought was weird. This is serious. Why did Jesus expect? Right, because he expected them. He sent the ten to go to the priest. One returns. His first question is, where are the other nine? And, and here I stop and I'm like, wait. You told them to go to the priest. You didn't tell them, come back. 
And this is the thank you that we're talking about. God will never require you to give thanks. We have scripture. Enter his courts with thanksgiving. We have authors in the Bible filled with the Holy Spirit. Give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks no matter what you do. Give thanks no matter what you're going through. But God will never tell you, thank me now. (laughs) You have a friend like that? You didn't thank me for what I did for you. I backed you up. They were talking trash about you. I backed you up. Where's my thank you at? He will never make you worship him. He will never make you give glory to him. He hears the cry of your need, of your miracle, your healing, your breakthrough. He hears your cry. He says, hey, if your earthly father gives you good gifts, you, you, ask, you ask your dad for some McDonald's, he doesn't give you dog food. You ask your dad to go fishing, he doesn't make you eat the, eat the grass, you know. He, he gives you what you ask. And so if, you're, if your earthly dad gives you what you ask, how much more will I, your heavenly father, give you what you ask? He has no problem answering prayer. He has no problem bringing a miracle into our life. He has no problem giving breakthrough. He has no problem setting us free. He has no problem filling us. He has no problem changing our perspective, giving us hope, filling us with peace, encountering us with his love. He sends his word. His word does the work when we obey it. And I think in this moment, few of us acknowledge, few of us take that step to say, Before I go to them and talk and move on, I'm, I'm going I'm to go talk to him really quick. He says, he came back. And he began to shout. He gets on his knees. He begins to shout. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for healing me. something missing in our life. When we continue to ask for things and continue to see results and in this place we don't run to him. be you will always be a little bit unsatisfied even when the greatest miracle happens in your life 
of course, when God heals you, like Daniel was sharing, migraines all the time, headaches all the time, God heals them. Of course, there's, there's this joy, there's this, man, this is so awesome. God answers a prayer. But you know, when, when he is not the center of our pursuit, we continue to say, God, you know, I need this next. I need this now, God. Can you do this in my life as well? Thank you so much for that, but I, I need this too now. And our life begins to revolve around everything that God does for us instead of who he is for us. And this leper was stopped in his tracks. And all of a sudden, you know, he didn't tell me to go back. He didn't tell me to worship him or come back and make sure to, to tell me and make sure to thank me and get on my knees and shout, I'm healed, thank you, Lord. But all of a sudden, something in his heart began to happen. See, love will make you do things that are beyond what you are asked and beyond what you are told. My wife would tell me, hey, can you, can you, can you bring, bring some lunch? And I bring, I bring food to feed 50 people. Hey, can you, hey, can you stop by and get this? And I'll, I'll stop by again, I'll get something else. why some of you lack joy? You're not thanking God enough for what you have right now. You know why some of you are not satisfied with your life? Because you're not thanking God enough for what he's done already. You know why you're not content even though you get answers? because you haven't come to know him and see him in a way he wants you to. It's not just about the miracles. It's not just about the answers. It's not just about the breakthrough. It's about coming to know him more. Seeing him in a way I have not seen him before. See, there is no need. There is no need for him to tell us, you need to worship me. When we begin to see God working in our life, there's a natural response that the Holy Spirit leads us to, to worship Him, to thank Him. Some of you, I want to say, you need to force yourself in worship to begin to give thanks. Well, if I, if I don't feel it, if it's not there, what, what do you mean? Just fake it? Yeah, fake it. It's better to begin to grudgingly hard-heartedly, God, I thank you for everything. God, I thank you for my health. God, I thank you for my parents. Oh, my gosh. I thank you for my wonderful brother. <laughs> yes. I thank you, Lord, for my sister, you know. I thank you so much for my boss. I thank you so much for my teacher. I thank you so much for everything I have. And as you begin to force yourself to thank God for what he's done, what you're doing is very spiritual and very biblical. Because the Bible, when it talks about thankfulness, it says this. When you begin to thank God in definition, what you're doing is acknowledging what he has done. And in acknowledging what he has done, you come to align yourself with the truth of his working power, not your situation. And when I do that, all of a sudden, worship begins to rise up in me. All of a sudden, I feel compelled to fall on my knees and raise my voice and lift my hands and say, Jesus, I thank you for healing me. I thank you for coming into my life. Start thanking God and watch a new level of joy come into your situation. Watch a new level of joy come into your life when you wake up. Start thanking God for what he's done. Start thanking God for who he is. There's something that happens in our Father's heart 
when we do what he asks us in his word, but we go above and beyond. We say, Lord, hey, before I leave right now to work, I want to spend an hour and just worship you. <laughs> I thank you so much for what you've done. I thank you so much for how real you are. I thank you so much for how good you are to me. Where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? Don't let that be you. Don't miss your moment of encounter when you can begin to thank God for what he's done. You begin to thank God for his faithfulness. You begin to thank God for his goodness. You begin to thank God for his love. You begin to thank God for everything you have. The leper comes to give thanks, but Jesus asks, where are they to give me glory? I began to think about that on my way. I mean, I just begin to ask God, begin to ask the Holy Spirit, what, what, it, what, is that, what does that look like? We, we sing these songs, I give you glory, glory, yeah, right? Jacob does, you know, Jacob just does an awesome job. He's smiling like nonstop and just anointed. I don't know how he does it. I'm like, man, doesn't your face hurt from smiling so much during one song? He's, I give you glory. <laughs> Y'all know, know the Jacob dance. I miss him. But what does that mean? Can you tell me what giving glory to God means? You know how many times I've said those words? And when reading this verse, I'm like, to come back and give you glory. What, what, what are you talking about? What, is that, what does that mean? What does it mean to give God glory? And, and I'm like, okay, wait. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm overcomplicating this. I'm going to step back a little bit from this story and just, and I, begin, I, just, I just literally, in my mind, I step back. I'm like, okay, the man gets healed. No, the man gets a word. He goes. He gets healed. He of the, he of the ten decides to go back. He gets on his knees. He begins to shout and cry out to God. He begins to thank him. And in the following verse, verse says, Jesus asks, where are the rest? Aren't they going to come and give God glory? And I'm like, wait. He fell to his knees and began to thank you and worship you. And now you're talking about the other nine giving you glory. And I begin to see, this is not so complicated. We give glory to God. When he does something in our life, we don't run off to where we want to go, but we run to him and we begin to say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for what you've done. And my acknowledgement of what he's done in giving thanks begins to give him glory. See, if they would have, the nine ran along to the priest over here. We're healed. Who healed you? Awesome guy over there. <laughs> Jesus, you know, you know, the guy you don't like. And they officiate the healing. Almost like they did it. But the one man that ran back said, they can officiate me later. What I'm going to do right now is give you glory. What I'm going to do right now is lift you up. I'm going to get on my knees before I get anywhere before the priest and say, Lord, I thank you. Jesus, I worship you. I want to acknowledge that this is not the work of man. This is not the work of my going. But you spoke. And that word led me back to you and put a face on the scripture that I received. And I begin to lift you up because you're the one that did this. You're the one that made this happen. You're the one that gave me the answer. You're the one that led me through. Oh my goodness, some of you I think you just woke up because God, God has been trying to get you to himself, not connected to your miracle, but it's impossible to do that unless we allow the Holy Spirit to bring us back to the place where he spoke and the one who spoke, we acknowledge it's his works, it's his doing, it's him, it's not me. You will never bring God glory even if he's doing miracles in your life 
but you are pursuing whatever you want to pursue. You're going wherever you want to go. Those that will bring him glory are those that come to him after every miracle, after every salvation, after every powerful service, after revival. Those that come to him and say, God, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. You know how many people get caught on this hype of revival, but they stop coming to God. Preachers who get invited all over the world because God's doing a revival through them. Yes, God, amen, amen. God does that. God uses men. God uses women. God uses people to bring revival. But it's not the revival. It's not the revival. And it's not because of me that it's happening. It's me coming back to him and saying, God, this started in my closet with you. This started when I was sick, when I was a drug addict, when I was lost. And you spoke your word. And I went. And I did what you told me. And then I saw you do these things. I saw you work in me and use me. And I'm not attracted and attached to your working power in my life. I'm just attracted to you. Revival is him. Revival is him. It's him. Get close to him and watch revival break out in your life. Get close to him and thank him and worship him and come to know him more and watch how your life radically changes. Some of you need to redirect your path tonight. You've been running after things that are good but not God. We can even run after the ministry and seeing miracles and all these things happen but lose sight of him. Lose sight of him. What did you guys do? Oh. Fasted for a year. Got up every, every morning at 4 a.m., sought the Lord. We've been working really hard. No, I, when they ask me, I'm not going to say that. I don't know what I did. I don't know if I did anything right. I just kept coming to Him. I, I just kept running to Him. I kept thanking him. I kept worshiping him. I kept giving him glory. If the rocks don't cry out, rocks will cry out. 